Mantis, a nightmare. Two days after emerging from the giant egg casing, the praying mantis nymph was seized by one of her many siblings. She swiftly bit down on the beta's eye, prompting him to flee and redirects his assault onto another smaller mantis. <laughs> a vast forest of green vegetation, flying, buzzing objects, and countless mysteries surrounded the young mantis. Upon her first molt in a warm alcove, she was joined by two siblings, the beta and an omega. After molting, she emerged larger, much larger than the beta. The Omega hadn't been strong enough to escape her former shell. Now, it was her tomb. Soon her siblings' numbers began to decline. Some from starvation, others from predation. She decided it was time to leave. She snatched the nearby Beta and sank her mandible into his head. He stopped squirming once his brain had been consumed. She would need energy for the journey to come. Moving into the unknown, it wasn't long before she sensed the presence of another. Mantis, part two, the mother. Not far from the praying mantis was an older female mantid attached to an evergreen shrub. A frothy substance appeared from the older mantis's backside. It was an egg, and Uatheka. This mantis would soon be a mother. More Uathesi were visible throughout the shrub. The young mantis watched the mother curiously for a time. The mother hovered over all her Uathesi, only leaving them to find food. But she moved very slowly. She was exhausted. Having molted again and grown larger, the young mantis considered devouring the mother, but before she could, the mother curled into herself, then died. Had age killed her, or was it from exhaustion after laying eggs? The young mantis decided being a mother wasn't for her. Sometime later, the mantis noted slight swaying of the leaf she was perched on. With no wind, it could only be one thing. She quickly turned then grabbed the approaching male mantis and decapitated him. Any suitors would be killed on sight. Mantis, part three, the murder hornet. Shortly after her final molt, the praying mantis found a healthy collection of flowers she claimed as her own. Nearby buzzing told her that a bee would be her next meal. To her surprise, a giant hornet barreled into her, knocking both insects from the flower onto the ground. In the midst of their struggle, the combatants rolled over fresh corpses of numerous honeybees, victims of the hornet's morning rampage. The mantis latched her raptorial forelegs around the hornet's thorax while avoiding her stinger. The hornet clamped her mandible over one of the mantis's antennae, then ripped it off completely before taking a chunk from just below her neck. This motion allowed the mantis to bury her own mandible into the hornet's thorax. Minutes felt like hours as the mantis chewed deeper into the hornet. The hornet struggled vigorously, but eventually stopped moving. After completely devouring the hornet, the mantis moved back to the top of her flower, victorious yet injured. Mantis, part four, ants. Camouflaged amongst the green stems of her flowers, the mantis watched the tiny ants move beneath her. At 11 months old, age and injuries were catching up to her. Ants were an easy meal considering her circumstances. The lead ant passed by with no knowledge of her presence. Once the last ants came into view, she snatched them up one by one, greedily gulping them down. Each one let out an odd aura, a pheromone, but she paid it no heed. A prickling sensation reverberated through her back legs. Cragging her head completely backwards, she saw the other ants begin to engulf her. Soon, the colony was swarming her forelegs as well. The lead ant positioned herself over the mantis's mandible, clamping it shut, disabling her primary weapon. Stings, bites, and cuts into her neck spurned the mantis into a panic. She fled but abruptly crumpled to the soil when the ants managed to completely saw her head off. A violent end to a nightmare existence. <laughs>